Hello everyone, uh, Mr. Fitri again, bringing you the second lesson of our second unit. Today we're going to look at rocks, specifically how we classify them. Right? How do we tell the difference between rocks and how do those different types of rock form? Our only objective for today is how do geologists classify rocks? Now we've got four vocab words here. First of all, weathering. The process of breaking down rocks into smaller pieces. Next, erosion. The process of transporting away smaller pieces of rocks. Now, how do they get moved? Well, running water, wind, waves, and glaciers will move these smaller pieces of rock. At the same time, these are also um, agents which weather them, all right? Water and wind, and glaciers and waves will break down bigger rocks into smaller rocks and also move them. Deposition. This is the process of dropping sediments by agents of erosion. So what is a sediment? Well, sediment is small, solid pieces of material that comes from rocks or living things. So this whole, uh, I'm sorry, these vocab words essentially describe a process which we will see here in this unit. All right. Let's take an example. All right. Water breaks down bigger pieces of rock into smaller pieces. It also helps to move it, deposits it, deposits it <laughs> through deposition. All right. And all these little pieces of material are called sediment. So on to our first objective, all right? How do geologists classify rocks? Now you see this little uh, chart here, which we will get into. Um, rocks are broken down into three categories, igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, and then below them are subcategories. And uh, rocks that fall within these categories and subcategories are uh, different uh, as we will see. So to begin, geologists are going to observe or look at the rock's mineral composition, the color, and the texture. So they're going to look at, you know, the little, little differences between the rocks, just like they do with minerals, like we discussed in our last class. Now, how do they classify them? Well, we're going to first start by looking at the mineral composition and color. So rocks are made of mixtures of minerals and other materials. Now, some rocks contain only a single mineral, while others contain several different minerals. What we need to understand is that there are about 20 minerals that make up most of the rocks of Earth's crust. Okay, so 20 minerals, kind of what we talked about last class, are going to make up the majority of rocks. And we call these rock-forming minerals. So knowing this, geologists are going to look at the rock's color because uh, it provides some clues to the rock's mineral composition. But like minerals from yesterday, or last class, I'm sorry, um, color alone does not provide enough information to identify a rock. So color is helpful, but we need more information. So 
So, next, we look at the texture. So, the texture of a rock is the look or feel of the rock's surface. Now, if you're looking at these two examples I've provided here, we need to understand that most rocks are made up of particles, small pieces of minerals or other rocks. Now, these small pieces, geologists call grains. And these grains are described using the grain size, the grain shape, and the grain pattern. So by looking at the grains, how they form, and what they look like, we can start to differentiate between different rocks. We can start to see why they're different and how they're different. Then we begin to think and look about, uh, look at the origin of rocks. The origin of a rock is the way the rock was formed. How did it come about? Now there are three types of uh, origins or how rocks are formed. The first is igneous rock. Igneous rock forms from the cooling of lava and magma, molten rock beneath and above the surface of the earth. Sedimentary rocks, they form when small particles of rocks or the remains of plants and animals are pressed together. Now these form in layers that are buried below the surface. The last one, metamorphic rock. These form when a rock is changed by heat and pressure or by chemical reactions. Now, because most of these form through heat and pressure, they mostly form deep underground. Remember, the deeper you go in the earth, the higher the temperature and the greater the pressure. So we're going to look at each of these specifically. Let's get into it. First, igneous rock. Like I just said, these form from the cooling of lava or magma. And this can occur on or beneath, under, Earth's surface. Now, our two subcategories. First is extrusive rock. This is lava which has hardened on the surface. So extrusive rocks, extrusive igneous rocks, form on the exterior of the Earth. Okay, think about it, extrusive, exterior, exterior, extrusive, okay? The second type is intrusive rock, intrusive igneous rock. This is magma hardened beneath Earth's surface, okay? So again, beneath Earth's, Earth's surface interior of the earth. Think about it again. Intrusive, interior. Interior, intrusive. Okay? So we can think about these depending on where they form. And from what? Lava on the exterior of the earth or magma within the interior of the earth. Now, Many igneous rocks are hard, dense, and durable. Now, 
if we think about our extrusive and intrusive just a little bit more, all right, and focus in on the texture of each. So rapidly cooling, all right, cooling very fast. Okay, rapidly cooling lava forms fine grained igneous rock with small crystals or no crystals at all. So these are the extrusive igneous rocks. They're cooling from lava very quickly and it's making small crystals or no crystals at all. On the flip side, slowly cooling magma forms coarse grained rocks with large crystals. So these are, our, these are our intrusive igneous rocks. They're cooling slowly from magma below Earth's surface, forming uh, large crystalled coarse grained rocks. Now, what do we use igneous rocks for? Well, primarily building materials or tools. Granite is an igneous rock. It has historically uh, been used as a building material. Some of you may see granite in kitchens. It makes a very durable surface for kitchen counters or floors or buildings. Obsidian is good for tools, like cutting tools. Historically, obsidian has been used for knives or arrowheads, like you see there. All right? it, can be, it can be made very, very sharp, and it's also very durable. Our next category is sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed through a sequence of processes. Okay, so first of all, weathering and erosion. All right, natural phenomenon must break down rock and move it. Once the rock is broken down and moved, three things will happen. First, deposition. Material is deposited in layers. Compaction. Layers of sediment build up over millions and millions of years. So one layer on top of the next, on top of the next, on top of the next, on top of the next. And as these layers build up, <laughs> it gets heavier and it squeezes the bottom layers, or the older layers, tightly together. Finally, cementation. This is when dissolved minerals crystallize. And when they crystallize, they glue particles of sediment together, right, forming a solid rock. So you see this process in that picture where you've got eroded sediments end up in the water, okay? And they begin to settle. And over time, layer after layer after layer build up, squeezing the bottom layers or the older layers together. Finally, uh, cementation occurs, where those minerals crystallize and glue the particles together, forming a solid piece of rock. Now we have three different types of sedimentary rock. First, clastic rock. This is sedimentary rock formed when rock fragments are squeezed together. So an example, sandstone. These come from mineral particles. So minerals are broken down, deposited, uh, cemented over time and form sandstone. 
And if I could show you an example, if we were in class, you would see that sandstone looks like sand, very small particles uh, solidified into one rock. Shale, clay and mud mixed with mineral particles. Okay. So most of these are coming from uh, inorganic substances. Okay. The next subcategory is organic rocks. Okay. Remember, organic means from living matter. Now, organic rocks form where the remains of plants and animals are deposited in layers. Okay, there are examples here. Uh, first, coal. Coal comes from dead and decayed plant matter. And this builds up over millions and millions and millions of years to form a solid piece of rock. The other is limestone. Limestone comes from skeletal fragments of marine organisms. What does that mean? Well, it means that dead fish and uh, clams and um, what else? Crabs and coral have lived and died have been deposited in layers and over time built up, cemented as one and formed limestone. So it's the skeletons of dead uh, animals that live in the sea. Lastly, chemical rocks. These are uh, formed when minerals dissolved in a water solution begin to crystallize. So what do we use sedimentary rocks for? Well, uh, we use them again for tools and building materials. Sandstone buildings. Uh, if you know that first home there, the White House, uh, that uh, is built from sandstone. Okay, so under the white paint is a sandstone building. Another is bauxite. Now you've probably seen bauxite if you've ever been to an old temple like um, Ayutthaya or Angkor Wat in Cambodia. The, the foundations of these temples are primarily bauxite and it's this reddish brown uh, bumpy um, rock that makes up most of these temples. Pretty, um, pretty unique. Lastly, we have metamorphic rocks. Now, metamorphic rocks form when a rock is changed by heat or pressure or by chemical reactions. Okay. Now, what's unique about metamorphic rocks is that metamorphic rocks can form out of igneous, sedimentary, or other metamorphic rocks. So if we take an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock and we apply heat and pressure to it, heat it up, squeeze it, what will happen is that this intense heat or pressure changes the size and shape of the grains or the mineral crystals to form a new type of rock. Okay, So I want you to remember that these metamorphic rocks come from other rocks and are only different due to heat, pressure, or chemical reactions. So an example here, an example. Granite is an igneous rock. All right. When we apply heat and pressure to it, it forms gneiss, nice, which is a metamorphic rock. If we take sandstone, which is a sedimentary rock, and we apply heat and pressure to it, it forms 
quartzite, which is a metamorphic rock. So you're, you see we're taking two other types of rock and changing it through heat and pressure. Now there are two types of metamorphic rocks, foliated rocks. Foliated rocks are described by the thin, flat layering found in most metamorphic rocks. So you see like with foliated layers of, um, of rock, okay? So you see that picture there. It looks like a gray layer followed by a dark gray, by a white, by a brown, by a gray, by a blackish layer. So different layers um, built up over time. Non-foliated rocks um, are when mineral grains are arranged randomly. So you don't see that uh, layering in a non-foliated rock. So think about foliated as a cake, all right? You see it layer after layer after layer, whereas you don't see that layering uh, with a non-foliated rock. What do we use metamorphic rocks for? Again, buildings, statues, and carvings mostly are made, made from marble, all right? You see the... Uh, the throne hall there, which is in Dusit here in Bangkok, that's made up of marble. Marble is a metamorphic rock. It's very sturdy, but you can also make beautiful carvings from it. The other is uh, roofing and other building materials. Slate has historically been used as a roofing material, as you see in the, the right-hand picture there. Finally, we have to think about the rock cycle. Now the rock cycle describes forces deep inside the earth and at the surface that produce a slow cycle that builds, destroys, and changes the rocks of the crust. So you see here all of our different rocks and how they are created and destroyed. So really briefly, let's start down at magma. When magma or lava cool, they form igneous rocks. Now, igneous rocks can be destroyed by melting back into magma. They can be subjected to heat and pressure to form metamorphic rocks or they can be broken down by weathering and erosion to form sediments. Now these sediments, once they are squeezed together, they're compacted and cemented, they form sedimentary rocks. Okay, sedimentary rocks form from, you guessed it, sediment. Now again, Sedimentary rocks can be broken down by weathering and erosion to form more sediment, or they can be subjected to heat and pressure to form metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks, again, they form when you get uh, sedimentary rocks or igneous rocks and you subject them to heat and pressure. Now, these metamorphic rocks can either be broken down through weathering and erosion or melted back into magma. So you have to think about these in terms of millions and millions of years. These rocks, the sediments that form them, the minerals that form them, are all being changed constantly. All right? So an igneous rock today might be a sedimentary rock in a hundred million years. It might be a metamorphic rock or magma in 200 million years. So keep that in mind. 
All right, that's a lot of information to cover. Um, please, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, send me a message or um, ask away, okay? So, thanks. Hope you have a great day. Rock on.